11. Loving the Queen Without Becoming Her Subject The Queen's argument was that if something wasn't done about it in less than no time, she'd have everybody executed all round. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland When she doesn't get her way, heads roll. She is competitive, domineering, greedy, and jealous. She's rude to my husband and causes problems in my marriage. What am I supposed to do? I can't divorce my mother. Like Robert Todd Lincoln, Ellen was torn between loyalty to her mother and loyalty to her spouse. Historians Neely and McMurtry claim Mary Todd Lincoln all but destroyed Robert's marriage. In 1871, Robert and his wife separated for approximately a year and a half because of tensions between his wife and his mother. Borderline queens seem unaware of the loyalty conflicts they create between their adult children and their spouses. Kaplan explains that such children are used ruthlessly, as though they were mere extensions of the self. They use them to manipulate and destroy potential enemies. They use them in order to experience pride. Such greed with regard to other people breeds the everlasting emptiness that is the silent dread of those without constancy. Inevitably, they use up the all-perfect partner, who, after all, is just an ordinary person who sometimes frustrates, who can't gratify magical wishes, a person whose comings and goings cannot be omnipotently controlled. Ellen and her husband frequently argued about her mother's unreasonable demands. Her husband nicknamed her mother Queen Anne because no one dared to confront her. Although Ellen tried to comply with her mother's wishes, she resented the trouble she caused in her marriage. Separating from her husband seemed easier than separating from her mother. The Queen's demands can exhaust her adult children, whom she may view as selfish and disloyal. Prior to the release of the insanity file, Robert Todd Lincoln was described by various biographers as a bad son, perfidious and disloyal. Like Ellen, Robert Todd Lincoln suffered from nervous exhaustion as a result of his mother's relentless interference in his adult life. It's never enough. Let her rule her life, not yours. The Queen's adult children cannot fill their mother's insatiable need for attention or admiration. They cannot compensate for what she did not receive as a child. They cannot please her, control her, or change her. They can, however, change how they respond to her. When adult children place their mother's needs before their own needs, they not only sacrifice themselves, but may be sacrificing their marriage. Adult children must allow the queen to rule her life, not theirs, and should never attempt to rule her. History demonstrates the disastrous consequences of attempting to rule the borderline queen, lessons well worth remembering. After his mother was released from the asylum, Robert Todd Lincoln wrote, As to interfering to control her in any way, I assure you and I hope you will so write to her that under no possible circumstances would I do so. If I could have foreseen my own experience in the matter, no consideration would have induced me to go through it. The ordinary troubles and distresses of life are enough without such as that. Robert learned perhaps too late to ignore his mother's irrational behavior, temper tantrums, retaliatory threats, and compulsive spending. The Queen's children must allow her the right to self-destruct while exerting their right to protect themselves. The borderline Queen may be threatened by those with power, including her own children who attempt to control her. Although not posing a threat to society, Mrs. Lincoln's compulsive spending was clearly irrational. The borderline nature of the queen's irrational behavior poses the greatest threat to those closest to her. Had Robert been a young child when his mother informed her sister that she considered having him killed, the situation would clearly have required immediate intervention. But Mrs. Lincoln's threat to have her son murdered was triggered by Robert's attempt to control her. Robert's mistake 
was trying to control his mother instead of simply protecting himself. The Queen's children need to tell their mother when her expectations are unreasonable or inappropriate. Ellen, too, learned not to control her mother. When her mother demanded more than she could give, Ellen said simply, Mother, my husband comes first. I want you to be happy, but I can't give up my time with my husband for you. Although her mother responded with a sarcastic projection, All you care about is yourself. Ellen knew in her heart that she truly did care about her mother's happiness. As if they were dealing with a child with unreasonable expectations, the Queen's adult children must explain the limits of what can be given. Holding on to positive feelings about the self is essential in order to experience positive feelings toward others. When the Queen's adult children refuse to be provoked, they maintain their own self-esteem and dignity. Ellen shared Robert Todd Lincoln's feeling, I have not allowed her anger at me to have any other effect upon me than regret that she should so feel and express herself toward me. She won't take no for an answer. Say no with your actions, not just with words. The Queen learned that being demanding eventually evoked compliance from others. One queen mother acknowledged her pride in her ability to manipulate people. Emotional manipulation is the queen's specialty and provides self-esteem and security. Saying no to the queen, therefore, is essential for adult children who need to protect their own well-being, emotional energy, and possibly their financial resources. Drykurs advised parents of children who demand undue attention to learn to say no. As he explained, it may seem difficult at first glance to know how to distinguish between due and undue attention. The secret lies in the ability to recognize the demands of the situation as a whole. Participation and cooperation require that each individual within the family be situation-centered rather than self-centered. Feeling obligated to satisfy an unreasonable demand from a parent is just as detrimental as feeling obligated to satisfy an unreasonable demand from a child. Although adult children may worry about being perceived as disloyal, they must worry first about their own needs. Drykurs encouraged family members to be concerned with the demands of the situation and to be unconcerned with what other people think. When the daughter of a borderline queen announced she was getting married, Her mother insisted on planning the wedding as if it were her own. The daughter wanted a simple, private ceremony, as opposed to her mother's desire for a large, lavish wedding. Because her daughter insisted on a simple ceremony, the queen mother refused to attend the wedding, complaining to extended family members that her daughter had shut her out of her life. In another case, a queen mother had a pattern of feigning illness to elicit guilt in her daughter in order to prevent abandonment. The mother suffered from diabetes and was hospitalized in a diabetic coma on the eve of her daughter's wedding. Although her daughter was filled with guilt and anxiety, she decided not to postpone the ceremony. She later learned that her mother had intentionally stopped taking her insulin the week before the wedding. In both cases, the Queen's adult daughters were confronted by others who implied they had done something wrong with statements like, How could you go through with your wedding without your own mother? And how can you go on your honeymoon when your mother is in the hospital? The Queen's adult children must understand that those with healthy mothers cannot imagine the manipulativeness of the borderline Queen. Others therefore assume that the child, rather than the mother, is the selfish one. Attempting to separate from the Queen Mother can cause volcanic eruptions. Everyone reacts to seeing the smoke and red-hot lava once it is flowing, but few people understand the forces beneath the surface that create the disaster. The Queen Mother and her children are like tectonic plates along a geological fault line. Once belonging to the same hole, they are separated by a fine line that is vulnerable to tremendous strain and pressure. What is witnessed on the surface as an earthquake or a volcanic eruption has been building for years. Although nothing can be done to prevent such disasters, 
adult children can learn to predict that their occurrence will coincide with attempts at separation. The ability to predict and prepare for disaster can mean the difference between life and death. The Queen's adult children cannot hope to control their own lives if they cannot say no to their mother. They either must make decisions that protect their own interests or accept responsibility for allowing themselves to be exploited. Although separation may cause splitting headaches for the adult child, to fail to separate is to be destroyed. The queen may erupt with rage, but separation will not destroy her. Nothing is freely given. Be wary of gifts with strings attached. Ellen's mother was a charming hostess, whose guests raved over the elegant meals and lavish table settings. Her mother glowed with pride, but grumbled as soon as company left, complaining about how hard she had worked and how unappreciated she felt. Her mother gave resentfully to others, and her gifts often left Ellen feeling indebted. The queen's emptiness distorts her perceptions of interactions with others. Regardless of how much she is appreciated, loved, valued, or admired, she feels disappointed. Gifts from the queen have strings attached because they are tied to her sense of self. She gives in order to receive what she needs or wants. She projects onto others her own desires and is surprised when gifts are not appreciated. The extravagant clothing Mrs. Lincoln purchased for her granddaughter appalled Robert's wife. An excerpt from a letter Mary Todd Lincoln wrote to her daughter-in-law conveys Mrs. Lincoln's innocent blindness regarding the inappropriateness of her gifts. My dear Mary, Robert writes that you were quite frightened about the baby clothes. Certainly they were made of the simplest materials, and if they were a little trimmed, there was certainly nothing out of the way. You have never mentioned to me if you had two parlors or how many windows you had. But I wish you the day you receive this to go and get silk biscatelle, not worsted curtains, to match the color of your carpet, a piano cover, and lace curtains, cornices, and charge to my account. Of course you will have to hurry about it. It would never do for you to receive callers New Year's Day with bare windows. Mrs. Lincoln's letter illustrates the Queen's tendency to tell her grown children what to do, where to live, how to dress, and how to raise their children. The Queen can be extraordinarily intrusive, imposing her tastes, values, and preferences on her adult children and their spouses. An adult child reported that she came home from work one day to discover that her mother had let herself into her home and rearranged her furniture. The strange combination of the Queen's extravagant gifts and her inability to give what is actually needed reflects her own longing to be indulged. Others see what the Queen cannot see that her need for attention is so out of control and pathetic that it is frightening. Others are embarrassed for her. The Queen's behavior elicits embarrassment about her need for recognition, attention, and control, and her children may react by becoming intensely private individuals. Robert Todd Lincoln became what some biographers referred to as compulsively private. When the Queen feels unappreciated, she may demand that gifts be returned, or she may cut off communication with those to whom they were given. Mary Todd Lincoln eventually demanded that her son and daughter-in-law return every gift she had given them. The deprived self within the queen has nothing to give and eventually resents giving what she could not afford to give. The queen's adult children should accept only those gifts that do not leave them feeling indebted, uncomfortable, or guilty. When Ellen's mother offered to buy her a new car, she was tempted to accept. Ellen's husband, however, was suspicious of her mother's motives and discouraged her from accepting the offer. In order to avoid triggering a hostile response, Ellen said, I appreciate your offer, mother, but Tom and I aren't comfortable accepting such a generous gift. You may need that money for yourself someday. The Queen's adult children should avoid becoming enmeshed with their mother. 
They should encourage and demonstrate financial as well as emotional independence. I don't believe her. Search for the kernel of truth. Queen mothers can manipulate their children by ploys for attention through reports of illness or accidents. Robert Todd Lincoln was so accustomed to his mother's reports of ill health that he discounted the seriousness of her condition just before her death. Ellen's mother sometimes lied in order to evoke attention. Although Ellen discounted most of what her mother said, she worried that she might not know when her mother was telling the truth. She was particularly suspicious of her mother's physical complaints, which ranged from migraines to what she described as strokes. She listened for inconsistencies, kept mental note of versions of the same story, and looked for evidence to corroborate her mother's stories. Unless they can verify the facts, children may not know how to respond appropriately. Adult children need to speak to the physician, ask for copies of medical reports and tests, and point out inconsistencies. No matter how offended their mother may be, adult children must have access to accurate information regarding matters of health and safety. Without verification through medical reports, the Queen's adult children are not likely to know the truth about their mother's health. I'm tired of being enlisted in her battles. Choose your own battles. The Queen Mother instigates chaos and conflict and then enlists her children to fight the ensuing battles. Divorces between kings and queens inevitably pull children in half, tearing their love and loyalty to their parents apart. Adult children must refuse to enlist in the Queen's army. Claims of mistreatment and threats of retaliation such as threatening lawsuits are common for borderline queens. Ellen's mother organized factions and dominated groups either with her fury or with deliberately embellished stories designed to win allegiance to her cause. She cannot rest until she wins. Although Ellen's parents had been divorced for many years, her mother remained bitter and jealous of Ellen's affection for her father. Ellen was furious when she learned that her mother had sometimes intentionally deprived her of seeing him. She felt set up and tricked, drafted into service in a war that was not her own. Ellen told her mother, I have a right to love my father, regardless of how you feel about him. Adult children can and must discharge themselves from the Queen's battles, which may involve neighborhoods, schools, churches, and any group to which she belongs. Drykors explained the motivation behind such attention-seeking behavior. Her behavior is saying, unless you pay attention to me, I am nothing. I have a place only when you are busy with me. Even negative attention seems to fill the queen's emptiness. Conflicts and controversy seem to follow her. Baker described Mary Todd Lincoln as one of the most detested public women in American history. I'm tired of being controlled. Just say no. The Queen Mother treats her children either like subjects or like objects to be used or admired. Loving the Queen Mother requires that adult children embrace their power and use it only to protect themselves. The Queen's children can be exploited if they are not able to say no. Saying no to the Queen, however, is extremely difficult, even for those who are not her children. It can take years for adult children to have the courage to tell a queen mother the truth about how they feel. Like being run over by a semi-trailer truck, they feel flattened so quickly that it is difficult to think what to say. Margaret Little described how her analysis with Winnicott gave her the courage to confront her own domineering mother. For the first time in my life, I exploded at my mother at some piece of her jibing and clever nonsense, I told her exactly what I felt, that she was being unkind and ridiculous, that she had had no business to marry or have children, and a great deal more in the same strain, quite regardless of any effect on her. Little added, although I did not see her again until she was dying two years later, I have never regretted it. 
the queen's behavior can be so outrageous that others think to themselves, I don't believe you. At some point in their lives, her adult children must tell their mother the truth about how they feel. When adult children finally find the courage to tell their mother the truth about their feelings, they no longer feel like children. Ellen's mother was a former dancer and coerced Ellen into taking ballet lessons when she was young. Ellen, however, had an athletic build and was more interested in sports than ballet. As a child, Ellen had no choice but to comply with her mother's demands and suffered through five years of dancing lessons. As an adult, Ellen struggled with telling her mother the truth about how she felt. When her mother phoned to complain about how busy she was, Ellen replied, I'm busy too, mother. In fact, I could use your help. Although her mother was offended, Ellen felt confident in her right to fair treatment. She slowly dislodged the hook of guilt that her mother used to control her and no longer swallowed the story that her mother's needs were more important than her own. It's always about her. What about you? The queen regards inconvenience as an injustice and can seem oblivious to the needs of others. Her circumstance feels uniquely painful, singularly upsetting, and particularly unfair. Her adult children need to protect themselves from inappropriate pleas for sympathy or special treatment. Ellen's mother unexpectedly offered to take care of her children over the summer. After weighing the advantages and disadvantages, Ellen questioned her mother's motives. It seemed odd for her mother to make such an offer. Her mother's words ran through her mind. I'll just come to your house. That way it'll be easier for you. Ellen did not believe her. She later discovered that a man her mother was dating had moved into Ellen's neighborhood. When she realized her mother's motive, she confronted her about her lack of candor and suggested that she stay the following summer if she was still interested in babysitting. Ellen handled the situation appropriately. She expressed her disappointment regarding her mother's lack of honesty and protected her own interests. Drycours explained, It is natural that we want to please our children, parents. It gives intense satisfaction to satisfy their desires. However, if we reach the point where we try to please the child, parent, at the expense of order, to give in to his demands unduly out of fear, then we need to be alert to the dangers in these actions. Whenever the child's parents' desire or request is contrary to order or to the demands of the situation, then we must have the courage to stick to the no that expresses our own best judgment. Adult children of borderline queens struggle to manage their own feelings of entitlement. Quite naturally, they often wonder, what about me? Yet if they verbalize these feelings, they are perceived as selfish. Baker's biography of Mary Todd Lincoln portrays Robert Lincoln in such a light. Baker accuses Robert of persecuting his mother and suggests that his view of her as mentally ill was a peculiar and damaging defense calculated more for the protection of his own respectability than his mother's well-being. The Queen's adult children cannot win. If they suggest their mother is mentally ill, they may be accused of attacking her although treatment obviously cannot begin without acknowledging the need for it. The borderline mother is not alone in her perception of individuation as aggression. Adult children, too, fear that separation will destroy their mother. The phrase, excuse me for living, expresses the shame that the queen's children may feel for having been born, for having needs, for having a self. How tragic! that a child's efforts to assert the self, protect the self, or express the self are thwarted not only by the borderline mother, but also apparently by society at large. Robert Todd Lincoln has yet to be vindicated by historians who accuse him of betraying his mother. Mirror the self instead of the queen. The queen conditions her children to respond to her needs, the behavior of young children universally reflects their feeling that they would do anything to win their mother's love. The queen's young children willingly perform for her, defend her, admire her, 
and sacrifice what they need for themselves in order to win her love. Only adult children have the opportunity to separate their needs and desires from the queen's. Submitting to the queen's relentless demands requires relinquishing the self and jeopardizes the child's mental health. Masterson observes that, in normal development, the mother introduces the child to increasingly difficult levels of frustration so the child will learn that she does not always get what she wants. At some point, the child's ego realizes, accepts, and internalizes this, understanding that it is a normal, although disagreeable, fact of life. The child with an arrested ego, however, will have a poor ability to tolerate frustration. But when ego development is arrested, control will not be internalized and develop into a reliable ego strength. Unfortunately, both the queen mother and her children can suffer from arrested ego development. The queen mother cannot supply her children with something she lacks in herself and uses her children to mirror her self-worth. This aberration in parenting results in children with selves that either respond with angry defiance and feelings of worthlessness or with false compliance and feelings of emptiness. Through therapy, the queen's adult children can uncover the unexpressed real self hidden beneath the queen's mirror. Without treatment, adult children may continue to feel empty and inadequate, depressed and hopeless. Masterson asserts that they will only feel good and actually loved when they are passive, compliant and submissive to the person to whom they cling for emotional supplies, their emotional lives are characterized by chronic anger, frustration, and feelings of being thwarted. Adult children must learn to mirror their true selves instead of the queen's. Ellen came to treatment submerged in feelings of emptiness, unable initially to see that fear kept her from separating from her mother. She misdirected her anger and frustration at her husband, who resented her mother's intrusiveness in the marriage. Ellen came very close to separating from her husband instead of her mother. Unconscious feelings govern relationships and are unlikely to change without therapy. Adult children need help learning how to survive and mirror their own ego. Trying to satisfy the demands of the queen prevents ego development and perpetuates feelings of emptiness. Winnicott observed, we really do know today a great deal about the way adults grow out of children and children grow out of infants. And a first principle is that health is maturity. The drive to development comes from within the child. The Queen's adult children need and want to mature, to rid themselves of frustration, subservience, resentment, and emptiness. The steps they must take include the following. 1. Protect their own rights. 2. Minimize providing undue attention. 3. Say no with words and behavior. 4. Ask only for what is actually needed. These behaviors can be difficult to follow. Change cannot happen by mere instruction. Instead, Change occurs by resolving the underlying fear that the individuation will destroy the self or the mother. Listening to a self-help book can actually increase frustration if therapy does not accompany the knowledge gained. A self-help book can neither reveal what is hidden within the self nor identify unconscious emotional needs. Therapy offers the crucial link between knowing what to do and being able to do it. The developmental steps listed here are unlikely to be accomplished without the help of a therapist. Step 1. Confirm separateness. I am. My mother was disappointed when I was born because I had my father's features. It's been a battle ever since. I've spent so much of my life trying not to be like her that I have no idea of who I am. Ellen found herself hidden behind her mother's mirror. She learned to confirm her being by establishing boundaries between herself and her mother. 
The Queen's children are susceptible to developing BPD because they experience their own needs as shameful. Their self-structure inevitably lacks cohesiveness, making them sensitive to rejection and failure. They tend to be self-critical and perfectionistic and struggle to find their own identity. Confirming separateness from the Queen Mother requires establishing boundaries between me and not me. Violations of boundaries should be pointed out as soon as they are noticed. It takes time to process feelings because emotional experiences are visceral. Ellen's stomach tightened into a ball the day she came home from work and discovered her mother planting flowers in her yard. She got out of the car and asked, What are you doing? Ellen recognized the slow burn of anger, a gut feeling of having been violated. The queen's intrusiveness takes others by surprise and catches adult children off guard. Borderline mothers need to be shown the border line between their children and themselves. Like drawing a line in the sand, I am statements confirm one separateness. Ellen said, you didn't ask me whether or not I wanted flowers planted in my yard. Maybe you're trying to be helpful, but I am angry. Pointing out, this is you and this is me, establishes a protective boundary for both parties. Separating territory is essential in maintaining ownership of oneself. The queen assumes that her children share her interests, tastes, and values. Without boundaries, the queen will rule. Adult children must identify their boundaries without attributing negative motivations to their mother's behavior. The queen is most likely to respond to feedback when positive or neutral motivations are attributed to her behavior. Although Ellen's mother replied sarcastically, you never appreciate anything I do. Ellen stated simply, that's not true. Regardless of the queen's response, adult children must confirm their separateness. Step two, create structure, I will. There are so many ways that she can get to me. I never tell her what I'm thinking or feeling because I don't want her to see the real me. It's the only way I can have some control. Gunderson warned that borderlines often manipulate others into compliance with their needs. Ellen felt caught in her mother's web of control. When she and her husband were first married, her mother offered to buy them a house. After Ellen discovered that her mother intended to move in with them, she declined the offer. The queen can lure her children into traps that are built for two. The queen's intrusiveness must be confined, her greediness limited, and her anger endured. Adult children must be true to themselves. Ellen developed a mantra to help strengthen her conviction in her right to autonomy. When she felt herself slipping back into becoming her mother's subject, she told herself, I am the master of myself. I will do what is right and what is good for me. I won't allow others to control me. An unwavering commitment to the true self requires allegiance to the self, the only place where freedom reigns. Step 3. Clarify consequences. I won't. I won't lose myself ever again. I've worked too hard to get where I am, and I finally feel entitled to my own life. My husband and children are entitled to my emotional energy, not my mother. For years, Ellen submitted to her mother's demands for time and attention. She spent hours shopping with her mother, hours that she could have spent with her children, husband, or friends. She allowed her mother to borrow clothing, some of which was never returned. She took time off from work to take her mother to the doctor, instead of suggesting that she drive herself or ask a friend or neighbor. Ellen needed to acknowledge the validity of her feelings before change could occur. After discovering her own limitations, she clarified consequences for her mother. Clarifying consequences for inappropriate behavior is the antidote for feelings of powerlessness and domination. Behavior becomes a choice instead of a reaction. Consequences give others choice about how to behave. 
If they choose A, then B will occur. Logical and neutral consequences should be used to respond to inappropriate behavior and require awareness of personal limits. Thoughts such as, I'm losing my mind, or I can't stand this, or I've had it, or I've hit my emotional wall, signify limits. Recognizing limits is crucial to survival and is not the same as giving up. A fundamental difference exists between thinking, I can't go on, and I can't go on like this. Ellen was sick and tired of being told that she was a terrible daughter. She said, you're lucky to have me as a daughter. The next time you imply that I'm not a good daughter, I will hang up the phone. If Ellen had said, I won't tolerate you treating me that way, her mother would not understand. The queen does not know how her behavior affects others and does not know what is normal. Offending behavior, words, or tone of voice must be specified before they can be changed. The queen is not aware that her expectations are unrealistic and will never know if no one tells her. Although Ellen learned to tell her mother how she felt, her mother responded by telling her that she expected too much. Regardless of how clearly and carefully a child expresses needs, the queen may be unable to respond appropriately. The goal is not to change the queen. The goal is to change how one responds to her. The queen mother may spend her life in front of her mirror. Her children, therefore, must find their own mirror. Ellen spent the first 30 years of her life in her mother's shadow. Margaret Little once described the analyst as a living mirror. Through analytic treatment, the queen's children can see themselves in the mirror of the analyst's eyes, where the true self is reflected and nurtured. Otherwise, as Masterson observes, a life ruled by the false self's defense against inner emptiness ends up truly empty. Through therapy, one can discover the joy and freedom of being oneself.